see for cars. Sports Sunday, first race today. We go up north, Johnny. Well, from here on, Mike, for the next two months or so, the spotlight is on Brisbane with their big carnival starting to warm up. Yesterday, they had a good program at Eagle Farm. It rained heavily during the week and the track was shifty and it did affect a few of the horses. In fact, the New Zealanders are blaming the shifty track for the defeat of Courier Bay. Now, that's the horse we were raving about last weekend uh, after his win in the Black Douglas. Yesterday, Never got out of second gear, ran nilly last. That's right, I remember you thought he might have been a barn crusher, he ended up a, a punter yeah. crusher. Well, Mike, the only thing we do know is that he's a hell of a lot better than he showed yesterday. Yeah. You've just got to put it right out of your mind. He pulled up okay, nothing wrong with him. Just one of those things, the glorious uncertainties of racing that keep punters going. The uh, first of the big races yesterday was the Mayfair Crest International Cup and it saw the top Sydney cult handy proverb uh, open his uh, campaign in Brisbane. He's running in the Grand Prix and the Queensland Derby in the next few weeks. Now, he's widest of all on the turn into the straight in the red jacket, white sleeves, red cap. Now, the horse in the blinkers and the white breastplate is Marlon near the inside. He kicks away at the top of the straight. He's a good staying type, Marlon. He's getting ready for the Brisbane Cup. Handy proverb, though, plenty of class. Moves up to him, they quickly kick away from the others. Zink is battling on into third place. Handy Proverb doesn't win by any fancy margin. He wants to loaf a little bit when he gets his head in front, but Cassidy was never perturbed by the same token, and he takes his stake earnings to about $525,000, Handy Proverb, a son of Twig Moss. He started at six to four on, and naturally enough was always in the red. Now, the Queensland Guineas was productive of a bookmaker's dream result because all three place getters started at cricket score odds. The trifecta paid about 46000 The winner, Persian World, is trained by Ben Moore, a former Armadale trainer, now on the Gold Coast, and ridden by Noel Smith. Now, let's try and find Courier Bay as the big field nears the turn, and you can form your own opinion. Now, look back into the last four or five horses. He's pretty wide on the track. Red sleeves, red cap. He's in front of about four horses. He's five deep on the turn with a white jacket, red sleeves, red cap. He's just getting out of camera's range. There he is appearing again now. A chestnut horse. I think he's last at the moment. Flat to the boards and going absolutely nowhere. I don't know. What do you think? Persian World at any old price is driven to the lead over Ras Flyer as they get close to home. Right down the outside, Travel Light in the red sleeves, red cap. A filly trained by Neville Begg. She's flashing home, and that's a great Oaks trial from Travel Light. But the winner, Persian World, started at 50 to 1. Leah Nouris got second at 66 to 1, and Grand Cindy was third, and she started at around about 25 to 1. So you can see why that trifecta was a whopper. Well, Mike, uh, punters are um, an amazing lot. Ronnie Quinton came back yesterday at Rose Hill after an absence of four months. He had six mounts, a couple of them were a bit rough, three or four of them had some uh, form claims, and punters to a man said, this bloke's he's bound to ride a winner first day back. Well, they absolutely plastered some of his rides. Castanilia was backed into seven to four, a lot of sentimental money, and Ronnie didn't ride a placed horse all day. Well, it was the eight times champ, isn't he? I suppose, yeah. as you say, he's such a popular fellow, the punters love him, and... Uh well, I can understand it. Well, the incentive was there, too. He was so desperately keen to win a race. Uh, let's have a look at Ronald as he uh, emerged from the jockey's room early in the day. He's riding a horse called Move Closer in this particular race for the Neville Voigt stable. Ron, pensive, serious, the true professional in every way, listens intently to instructions. Uh, he offers uh, comments of his own, which are often uh, taken plenty of notice of by owners and trainers, and more often than not, uh, they turn out to be correct. Ronnie landed in hospital back on the 4th of January with a badly shattered left wrist after falling from a horse called Addictive in a race at Canterbury and this was the fall that put him out of action for such a long time. Now he's got red with a white cap, uh, there he goes, the horse doesn't fall, he merely blunders, he catapults Quinton from the saddle and Ron took the full brunt of that fall on the left wrist. Um, his wrist yesterday, uh, Gibbo, I thought still looked a little swollen, possibly slightly misshapen, uh, but it's perfectly effective. And I'll tell you what, mate, it won't be long before the boss is back in action. Great rider. Yeah, he is. Although it was Mickey Dittman's day yesterday. Yeah, Mick won three, two of them trained by Tommy Smith, but Mayfield Smith still has that big lead. He's a certainty in the Premiership. Harness racing had a real high in Sydney in the early 70s and there were many legendary performers, one after the other in fact, in a real vintage era, but there were none more popular than Paleface Adios and Hondo Grattan. The two old champs fought out the finish of the 1974 Miracle Mile and the old timers still talk about it. The two old warriors on Friday night at Harold Park returned to the scene of some of their greatest triumphs and I can tell you uh, that there were plenty of wet eyes on hand. The crowd went berserk on that memorable night at Harold Park when the champions staged this titanic tussle. 
pale-faced Adios with that familiar blaze looked certain to win on the home turn, but little Hondo had other ideas. The compact brown stallion wore down his illustrious rival to snatch victory in the very last stride. Twelve years on, and the dynamic duo returned to the battleground. There was a stir earlier in the night when Hondo Grattan's driver, Tony Turnbull, escaped serious injury in this sensational fall. He suffered facial abrasions and bruising, but nothing was going to keep him away from his faithful companion in the reenactment of that 1974 Miracle Mile. Looking almost as fit as they were on the big night, the Tamora Tornado and the Bathurst Bulldog stirred the emotions of the crowd as they stormed down the Harold Park Strait. And both were keen to go on after passing the winning post. Actor John Mellion presented mementos of the occasion to Tony Turnbull and Colin Pike to round off a night of nostalgia. Mike, it's a pity the show's so tight today. I'd be delighted to sing a few bars of Little Hondo. <laughs> yes, that was a great one, Johnny. Anyway, uh, thanks for being with us again. We'll see you next Sunday. Good to see you. Okie doke. Uh, talking of racing, racing of another kind tonight here on 9.